Behavioural Economics on a Post-it number 34, The Public Goods Game. In this video and in uh, a few of the subsequent, uh, a few sub subsequent uh, videos that I'll post up, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about various what we call economic games um, that have been developed to, sh to show, to demonstrate, I suppose, that people or a lot of people often exhibit cooperative tendencies more so than uh more so than the assumption that people are purely selfish which a lot of people believe is embedded in standard rational choice theory and standard economic theory again i think that standard economics or at least um um, the historical development of economic theory goes beyond <laughs> the assumption that people are purely selfish. But that's the caricature that, if you like, that's been given to sort of modern economic theory and modern rational choice theory. So we'll just take that as given here. So basically, the, these these games um, demonstrate that people are often, not all people, but a lot of people are often more cooperative than that assumption of pure selfishness that many believe is embedded within standard rational choice theory. So this is the public goods game. I'll just this is a version of the public goods game. I'll just talk through it sort of very quickly here and hopefully you'll get the gist. Um, imagine in this particular public goods game there's five people. So these are the different people, one, two, three, four, five, right? And each of them have got five tokens. So the very small to the sm very small circle circles there are the number of to tokens that these people have that can, each token can be assumed to be worth some kind of monetary value. Okay. Now, each player, as you can see, as I've said, has started with five tokens. One, two, three, four, five, right? And this is, this is a public pot, and each player is asked if they will put some of their tokens into a public pot. Right. Now, when they've all done that, they don't know how much each each other are given into the public pot. That's sort of anonymous to each other. But when they've all sort of donated what they want to to the public pot, the number of tokens in the public pot is doubled, and then those that total is then uh, equally distributed back to the individuals. Right, and that's the that's and that determines how many tokens they end up with. Now, the best collective strategy, as I've written there in this particular game, is for all of the, the best collective strategy is for all of the individuals to put all of their tokens into the public pot because then they'll be doubled, right? So if they all put their tokens into the public pot, there'd be 25 tokens in the public pot, wouldn't they? Five times 25. That would be doubled, that total, so there'd be 50 tokens and then they'd be equally distributed back to the individuals so they'd all end up with 10 tokens, right? That would be the best collective strategy. But from an individual, so if you take each individual, if they if they were operating selfishly, each individual might think, okay, if all of these other four put all of the, their tokens into the public pot and I don't put any of my tokens into the public pot, there'll be 20 tokens in the public pot. That'll be doubled to 40. I'll get a share of that. Nobody will know that I haven't put any in. I'll receive eight of those 40 tokens back and I'll end up with 13 tokens. Everybody else would end up with eight tokens. Right? So for an individual, perhaps the best strategy, if they could follow that particular route, would be to donate no tokens to the public pot. They'd end up with 13 tokens if everybody else donated all of their tokens, rather than 10 tokens if everybody donated their tokens, right? That'd be the best individual strategy. But the, but the notion then is that each individual would recognise that each, each, each of the other individuals might do that. So say this individual here might think, OK, that individual in this situation is perhaps not going to give anything. And that individual over here is not going to get And that individual over here is not going to get anything. And if I give all my tokens into the public pod and nobody else gives any, there'll be five tokens in the public pod. Uh, that will be doubled to 10. I'll only get two of those back. I'll end up with two tokens, which is a lot less than the five that I currently have. So I'm going to donate nothing as well. I expect everybody else is going to try to game this system 
and therefore I will lose out if I if I behave cooperatively and they game the system. So I'm gonna I'm not gonna give anything either. So the in, so the the expectation, according to some, the rational expectation really is that nobody will give anything into the public part, even though everybody could gain twice as many tokens if everybody behaved cooperatively, right? Now, in reality, when you play these games, is that you don't find that sort of completely, uh, in scare quotes, economically rational uh, expectation playing out, at least not with everybody. What you find, what you tend to find is a lot of the participants in these games give a lot of their tokens. They put a lot of their tokens into the public part. Some, of course, well, perhaps not of course, but some do indeed give no tokens whatsoever. So they do behave in the sort of, if you like, the 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 uh, typical um, expectation around a, a rational individual of what a, a rational individual might do. But a lot of individuals do give, maybe not all of their tokens, but they do give, a, you know, some individuals give all of their tokens. Many individuals give uh, several of their tokens into the public part. So what might be going on in these, and I, uh, this is just a hypothesis that I'm speculating, what might be going on is that many people want to signal to others that they have cooperative intentions and although often you only play these games sort of once some of them are repeated games but often you only play these games once um you know those cooperative intentions don't really play a significant uh, part in in the future of these particular games because the games are not repeated but in the real world it might be that sig sign signaling cooperative t intentions serves for the good of everybody, and that those uh, that signaling of those cooperative intentions is so deep within individuals or many individuals that it still plays out in these particular games, even though the games are only sort of one shot games, if you like, they're not repeated tasks. So that might be what's going on is that because the signaling and then the acting upon cooperative intentions is so deep within many individuals that that serves us all or t to our benefit across society and it might even be the case that across repeated tasks those that signal cooperation bring others in perhaps towards um, you know bring others uh, who previously acted selfishly towards sort of more cooperative behaviors I suppose it could work with the other way around as well is that those people that behave selfishly could drive out the cooperative intentions of particular individuals in future tasks also anyway um, there we have it. That's the public goods game. Basically, it demonstrates that people tend to be a lot more cooperative than the uh, stereotypical assumption of a, well, a rational individual uh, would be.